Hi, everyone, and welcome to Power of Parks, where we share inspiring stories from people who have benefited from nature, parks, and recreation. My guest today is Sandy Manon. She's a yoga teacher who currently teaches yoga in the park at Veterans Park, a village of Royal Palm Beach operated park. She prefers teaching outdoors so her students can experience the full benefits of nature in their practice. Sandy is also a nurse practitioner who focuses on wellness and aging gracefully and recognizes the role of nature and parks on both. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell me about the yoga class that you teach. So there are many different types of yoga, and I try to incorporate a small part of each into my practice. My practice is based on vinyasa, which is a style of yoga that incorporates moving from one posture to another using breath to guide each movement. Another way to describe vinyasa is flow yoga. The Sanskrit word for vinyasa means variation within prescribed parameters. Vinyasa is different because you can do different postures, different movements um, at every class. The benefit of vinyasa yoga is that it develops a more balanced practice. Therefore, the body's more balanced. The style of yoga prevents repetitive motions injuries that can happen if you repeat the same movements all the time. Awesome. And so what are the benefits of yoga? Well, with vinyasa yoga, it's a breath practice, one breath, one movement. So our breath connects every action of our life with the intention of moving forward to what we value individually. Vinyasa yoga allows our external movements to be an expression of how we think and feel. Vinyasa breath represents represents the beat of our heart with the exhale and the inhale. Ujjayi breath is a breathing technique that is done by inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. The overall benefits are relaxation, causing stress reduction. Vinyasa practices generates heat, therefore provides cardiovascular benefits. Postures, for example, the warrior poses, are held to promote strength. There's core work, breath work, balance, and stretching. At the end of the class is the most important posture, which is Shavasana, which is considered the final resting pose for many. A meditative state is obtained relaxing the body completely. In my classes, I like to have fun, shake things up in the body, challenge the body to the point of calming the body down. So at the beginning, when people first begin yoga, they're so focused on the postures and trying to do the right thing. And eventually, as you develop your practice, then it becomes more meditative. You're no longer focusing on each posture. You know the postures, then you're able to release, relax, breathe, and then it becomes more meditative. Yeah, and and so what are the benefits of teaching yoga outdoors and in nature? Practicing yoga outdoors combines exercise, which releases your natural mood boosters, which are endorphins. They get released into the world, acquiring all the natural world offers us. We get endorphins just from being out in nature, from um, viewing nature, the trees, the clouds, the sun, the sky. It increases our wakeful relaxation and internal focus. Nature connects us to our root chakra. The root chakra is activated during yoga by being barefoot in the grass and putting your hands on the earth. And is that something that students can do, uh, be barefoot in the grass? You'll be on your mat, but your mat can be on grass. Where we're going to be in Veterans Park is going to be in the theater, the amphitheater. So some people would prefer to be on the concrete because it's more stable. Some people prefer to have their mat on the grass. Some people prefer to be just on the grass. Yeah. And and so what uh, differences do you find teaching yoga outdoors versus teaching it indoors and in a confined setting? The energy is completely different in the studio versus a class in the nature. When a class is started in a studio, there's a lot of energy, some negative, some positive, but there's a lot of what I call chatter in the room. When yogis come to an outdoor class, the energy is much more relaxed from the minute of stepping on the mat. In a studio, at the beginning of class, many yogis will talk to each other before the start of class. Outside, most yogis will be found sitting in meditation or laying looking up in the sky. It's just so peaceful. When you practice outside, all of your senses wake up. Your scent, your sight, and touch activate the parts of the brain that make you more present. Imagine the beginning of class when you're sitting on your mat and I ask you to take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth, and you can smell nature 
You can see the clouds or the sun. You can feel the heat of the sun on your face, the dew of the morning on your feet when you're on the grass. And all of your endorphins start flowing through your body, and you have only been in class just a moment. And I like that you brought up that your senses are activated outside. Right, completely activated. Where When you're in the, in the building, you have other senses that are activated, but it's more distraction. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a difference. When I practice inside, like I said, everybody's kind of chattering. And outside, people don't do that. They sit in nature, and they just be um, when you're getting started. Can you describe the environment of the park um, and uh, of the class? Yeah, the, the fountain is back behind us. Um, the, the amphitheater is actually really cool because where I will be is up a little higher, and then there's multiple levels. Oh. And then the amphitheater goes in more of a half to a three-quarter circle all around. So everybody will be able to see the center, but you'll all feel part of a community. Mm. You're not going to be like in a studio. You're lined up in a line and then people are lined up behind you. This, you're lined up more in a half circle all the way around so that you can stagger, you can have more of your own space. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's the trees, there's um, the flags are there. Oh. So all of the American flags are there um, and it's a veterans park. What feedback do you receive from students? So students will say that initially when they go from practicing indoors to outdoors, they might feel a little awkward. They're a little uncomfortable because they're used to the element of the studio. They don't feel the security of the four walls around them or the floor under their feet. Indoor classes bring security. Stepping and practicing outside of one's comfort zone opens an entirely different yoga practice. Imagine doing sun salutations under the actual sun rays or doing the tree pose while you're sitting in Drishti, actually with your focal point, which is what Drishti means, on the real tree. When you look at the history of yoga, Buddha wasn't in a studio, he was in a forest. There have been studies that show yogis exposed to nature during their practice have a lower concentration of the stress hormone cortisol. Mm. So it's definitely a stress, much stress relieving practice. Yoga itself is, but then you enhance that with being out in nature, mm -hmm. which even gives you more stress reduction. Yeah, and so you're a nurse practitioner, right? You're a health professional. And um, so from that standpoint, how do you perceive nature and these opportunities for recreation and parks as being beneficial to our mental and our physical wellness? So I'm a family practice nurse practitioner. My focus is actually on wellness and aging gracefully. Um, I, practicing yoga in the park enhances one's yoga practice because the body senses all need to be activated. When you practice outside, the body needs to be aware of what's up without seeing it. You don't see the ceiling. You need to go deeper into your body as all your senses are being activated as you're moving through the postures, which enhances your balance and strengthens your muscles. Balance is a challenge outside. As nothing is stable outside, the clouds are moving, the wind may be blowing, it may be too hot or too cold, there may be bugs. When we welcome those outer elements, we become stronger and more stable, not only in our yoga practice, but in all aspects of life. Practicing outdoors aligns you with nature. It's amazing for your skin, your inner glow, connecting to the greatest of the living things, our planet. At the beginning or the end of every class, there's a short meditation that allows us to be full of compassion and love for ourselves. And when outside, we appreciate the earth that we live in. That's really nice. And it opens up our appreciation that we may not get um, during our day-to-day -day lives. Right. And when, you're, when we're rushing and we're in traffic, we don't appreciate all the things that we have. Mm -hmm. And when you have that time to sit outside and you look around and you see the trees and the sun and the park and the beauty and the, and the fountains at Veterans Park and, and the mementos and the flags, it's... Yeah. And, and the kids playing in the water park and all of that. It's so relaxing. 
Um, and, and so how do you feel about having the opportunity to teach these classes for the public park system? Um, there are some free classes coming up. They're also offered at an affordable rate during other times. Uh, how does this help increase the access for the public? Well, I think it's awesome. I moved here from the West Coast, and there were not a lot of free classes. There were not a lot of community, there were not any community classes. Everything was in a yoga studio. Um, I'm so excited and honored to be part of bringing yoga into the park. Uh, yoga classes can be very expensive, and being part of the public park system allows any and everyone that wants to participate in yoga to be able to. It allows those that have maybe weight issues and they don't want to go into the studio. They don't want to pay an expensive amount if they don't think that they can do it. So our yoga classes are geared to every single person. Whether you this is your first time, you, you've done yoga for 30 years, you're 20 years old, 50 years old, or 80 years old. We gear our yoga classes to everybody. Mm -hmm. So I just also wanted to remind our listeners that you do teach yoga for the village of Royal Palm Beach, and anyone can find out more about these opportunities as well as other opportunities um, for fitness and wellness at royalpalmbeach.com. But if you don't live in that area, um, we do encourage our listeners to check out their own local park system as well as pbcparks.com for additional opportunities to participate in yoga classes and other wellness programs. So, Sandy, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome.